Good morning. My name is Kevin Christensen. I am the director for Hope Studios. Um, but I'd like to start off with a quick video before I dive in. Imagine a tool that can increase, increase your, your ministry, ministry 10 times. Today, we open a door that will open many others. We move with a purpose. Every beautiful invention was created for a purpose. Change happens when we leave our comfort zone and come together, embracing differences, cultures, and ages. We've created a tool that nobody saw coming. We work best when we work together. No one is left out. We are a new generation, more diverse than before. This is what we believe as a media ministry. This is our mission. We are here because of you. The truth is, where you go, we go. And dies for me purely because he loves me. Hope Channel International. We've moved to the future. Starting now. In today's world, distractions abound. The true challenge lies not in conveying information, but breaking through the noise and forging meaningful conversations that captivate hearts and minds. You see, everything these days needs to be able to break through the noise. And how are we able to be able to capture the attention of, of people? We are in an extraordinary business, one that goes beyond creating content that informs and educates. Each one of us here has arguably the most difficult job in the world. It's the business of transforming people's worldview. You see, in a world of bombarded uh, distractions, um, there is only one place left in the world where people will put down their phones and actually pay attention to someone else's worldview. It's not in a classroom, it's not in a church, yet it exists in every town or city. That oasis of undivided attention is the cinema. Netflix found that 61% of people regularly watch between two to six episodes in one sitting. And back when Stranger Things season two premiered, 361,000 people watched all nine episodes the day it came out. By the way, if you care about the math, that's 466 minutes of attention. And most of us, when we get through the binging, go, whoa, where did the time go? <laughs> and that's because, according to psychologists, we experience something that is called narrative transportation. The story's fictional world radically alters the way information is processed in our brains. We let our guards down, we experience what is called neural coupling, where our brains flood with oxytocin, cortisol, and dopamine, which causes us to have an emotional connection, and guess what? We retain information. Because we don't just receive information, we actually experience empathy. That is the power of a storytelling experience. It's almost as if the greatest storyteller of all time, Jesus, uh, actually knew what he was doing when he did community fictional storytelling or parables. But today, people pay attention, to, getting people to pay attention to that storytelling is harder than ever. That's why in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to cover the storytelling experience of event cinema in three parts. It's the what, the how, and the why. So let's start with the what. At Hope Channel International, we recognized that the evolving media landscape was moving away from traditional television to on-demand streaming and in-person events. So in response, we launched our first cinematic arm dedicated to global impact, Hope Studios. Because until this point, something crucial had been missing for Adventist creatives. It was that link that carries our high-quality content beyond our borders to non-Adventists in cinemas and on streaming platforms. But today, the exciting news is that that chain of development, financing, production, and distribution is now complete, allowing us to reach new heights, which we are doing with our first ever feature film, The Hopeful. Aboard a steamship, Sailing across the Atlantic Ocean in 1874, widower John Andrews delights the restless minds of his two children with a tale of courage, hope, 
war and true love that begins with the end of the world. And ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited this morning to show you an exclusive sneak peek. out we tried father but i couldn't sleep it's nothing to fear my sweet it's a calm sea tonight i wish mother were here i miss her too how proud she would have been of you both she wouldn't want you to be afraid of what the future holds Try to get some sleep, you too. Oh, Father, I couldn't possibly sleep. Tell us a story. Oh, yes, please tell us a story, Father. Very well. What shall it be tonight? How you fell in love with Mother. No, an adventure with a battle. I know a tale that has both. You do? Oh, yes. A story of courage and hope, war and true love. Is there any fighting in it? You're in luck, son. It starts with a battle. The year was 1816, and a man by the name of William Miller had recently returned from war. Hopeful is event cinema. With a runtime of 90 minutes, an Emmy Award winning creative team, and two original songs by the Grammy Award winning artist who wrote many of the contemporary songs we've wrote in Academy and Church, such as 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, Our God, and Cornerstone. Cinematically, it is mixed in Dolby Atmos with visuals by the colorist of the Oscar Award winning film, Elvis. But if you don't, but we, it's because we didn't want to just tell a story. We wanted to create an experience. We wanted people to be immersed as the cannonballs fly over them when God spared William Miller in battle. We wanted people to feel the painful loss of a child when Ellen and James bury their two-month-old baby in the snow-covered ground. We wanted people to experience true narrative transportation. The how. Religion and business are not two separate things. They are one. At Hope Studios, we recognized that if we wanted to achieve the level of excellence expected by modern audiences, we had to think like the founders of Adventism and link mission with business. Or to put it another way, to move from a media, mis media ministry model to a film financing model. So what does that mean? Let's dive into the weeds. Both operate under the nonprofit church model for which we're registered with the IRS. However, one is in-house and the other utilizes the skills of specialized industry professionals and an outsourcing model. Under the media ministry model, the ministry asks the donor for money, and then its in-house team of full-time employees distributes the content on its own platforms and turns to a donor for the next project. Oh, and uh, when it comes to liability, the ministry bears all the risk. 
Now, under the film financing model, we also start with money from a donor. However, we don't view this as the end amount. We view this much like the parable of the talents as seed money. We then work with an independent for-profit company. In North America, these are called limited liability companies, LLCs. They're proprietary limited in Australia and the UK, or limitadas in Central and South America. And this bridge between the church and business has excited Adventist business people. In fact, for the first time in Hope Channel International's history, this year, Hope Studios was invited to present what we're doing at an ASI event right here in North America. These companies can contract exactly who they need, specific to the production, like industry-specific film accountants who can pay people quickly, and they can tap into film incentives in ways that the church's 501c3 structure cannot. So that same money is invested, that same donor money is invested with a vetted LLC, they hire expert crew for a few weeks, they get tax incentive money up to 40%, it's similar to a matching donation, and then they hand the film over to a professional distribution company. And also, uh, the church does not carry the business risk. So if something goes wrong, the LLC is the point of litigation and the church is indemnified. Therefore, protecting our assets and most importantly, protecting its mission. The distributor puts it in cinemas on major streaming platforms and other places to reach people who would never walk into a church, would never listen to a sermon, and would never watch a pastor on TV. This maximizes our missional impact to ensure we're not preaching to the choir. And along the way, ticket and streaming revenues both recoup the initial cost and pay for the next evangelistic project. This means donors are no longer driving content that's not for them anyway. This aligns our content with its intended audience. This honors the entrepreneurial spirit of our founders, and this is the model of stewardship. In fact, it's the model we use to create the hopeful. You see, a number of years back, a project was commissioned to tell our story to the world. Hours of content were filmed, agreements were signed, and much of that footage became the mini-series, Tell the World. However, the theatrical option on the initial contracts was never executed. So it was revealed to us that we had an opportunity to reach a new, previously unreachable audience in cinemas and on streamers by exercising that option and telling our story in a new way. Filming new footage, adding additional storylines, and even utilizing previously unused scenes, we created something new with the hopeful. We created an experience. We've tested the film and screenings for industry professionals from Universal, Lionsgate, Capitol Records, and even were the featured screening last month at the largest international Christian film festival in the world. And do you know what we found? Undivided attention for 90 minutes to the Adventist worldview. We realized that we had more than a movie. We had an event that stirred discussion. And after the screening that we had for Capitol Records in Nashville, their president actually reached out to us the next day and he said, man, last night I just went on this deep dive about that Ellen character. She's fascinating. We know that throughout history, God could get the attention of kings and rulers. And we know that today, God can get the attention of the most powerful executives to take their limited time on their own motivation and dive deeper into the three angels' messages. I want to play a little clip for you of, um, of a conversation that we had. By the way, this was at the largest international Christian film festival in the world. Uh, our director sat in the back and, and noticed that in total, maybe five people left to take phone calls or go to the bathroom, and all five of them came back. There were not phones open. There were not side conversations. It was undivided attention, and it was truly an experience. No. I also think there are people that were raised with a certain religion that are curious about other religions because maybe they don't fit into that bucket anymore. Um, yeah. you know, or, or maybe it was crammed down their throat as children, and they're looking to explore other avenues and and this really told like what are the principles that you know the seventh day adventists were founded on and what's the belief system like i didn't know about the veganism or you know some of the other things that came up the healthy lifestyle and the yeah i did know about saturdays so we're not going to release on a saturday um <laughs> but you know <laughs> But yeah, there were things that I walked away with going, oh, that's that's really interesting. And that's came out of this story. 
Several years ago, I was managing a special for Netflix when I discovered that one of my employees was a former Mormon. I remember David Trim's presentation on accession rates in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and distinctly recall him presenting that the only denomination's accession rate in North America not declining was the Mormon Church. I'd also seen their church channel transition from its most watched show, which I'm sure you're all going to binge this evening, called The Love of Quilting, um, to producing household name shows like Studio C and Heartland. In two years, their first scripted series was picked up by Netflix. So naturally, I had to ask how and why. I asked, what was your ROI? Was it the number of baptisms, Bible study signups, uh, donations? <laughs> he laughed at me. He said, I was asking the wrong questions, and I was confused. And then he reframed my mindset. He said, we don't believe our media is the evangelist. Our members are the evangelists. We just want to create media that they can be proud to share. And when someone watches it and has questions, the conversation comes, the conversion comes through the relationship. Our media is a tool. But let's be honest, for far too long, we've allowed it to be an excuse for not doing evangelism ourselves. Yet Adventist kids and young adults are media evangelists. They're the evangelists for Netflix shows and Marvel movies, not Adventist shows and movies. Did you know that nearly half of Adventist church members are slipping away? We're almost at the point of leaving both doors open so they can walk in one and out the other. And according to Adventist statistics and research, it's not even usually deliberate. It just happens. But today we have a unique opportunity to change that. What is the best possible way to stay in the church? By being involved. By sharing something that you're proud of, or as Jesus worded it, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. But we have that unique opportunity now, but we have to do it together. We cannot be siloed. I want to end with a quick story here. A few months ago, we found ourselves facing a last-minute chance to screen our film for a potential sponsor. But a stormy night wreaked havoc on flight schedules, canceling all planes from D.C. to Orlando. The director called me and declared, Kevin, I'm renting a car for 14 hours and driving through the night all the way to the cinema to get there to get the film in time for testing. On my flight to the screening the following day, the woman next to me struck up conversation. But as we left the ground, the conversation took a turn. She shared with me that she had a brain tumor combined with stage four breast cancer. The disease had mercilessly spread throughout her body into her bones. She confessed that although raised by a pastor, her faith had been shattered. She'd lost hope. I realized in that moment, the screening had been scheduled for a reason. And that's when I heard it. That still small voice saying, invite her to the hopeful. The next morning, amidst the executives through the parking lot, I saw her walking into the cinema, cane in hand. And as the screening finished, she asked, where can I see more films like that? I was so interested because my mother actually was Adventist. When I told our director about the mystery woman at the screening, he began to tear up. He said, Kevin, if she's the only reason I drove 14 hours through the night, it was worth it. We connected her with a local pastor, and on Easter Sabbath at the Forest Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, the congregation had someone new in the pew. This is hope. This is the power of the community-building, storytelling experience. And this is the why. So I'll leave you with this. What do we do? We get involved. We empower our members as individuals and as a unified church with the tools that they need to be able to create their own content that tells our story. We want to give them the tools to confidently share their values with the world and be proud of being Adventist. But these tools are useless if they sit by unused. So together, we can cut through the noise. We can create the oasis of undivided attention with event cinema, starting with our own trailer, with our own story. I will now leave you with the trailer for our own story. Thank you. Try to get some sleep, you too. Oh, Father, I couldn't possibly sleep. Tell us a story. Oh, yes. Please tell us a story, Father. Very well. What shall it be tonight? How you fell in love with Mother. No, an adventure with a battle. You know, a tale that has both. You do? Oh, yes. A story of courage and hope, 
war and true love. His word. Hello. No, you heard me. Consider me someone who's fallen off the path. Father?